please pause the video and take a moment to read this important safety message. Okay, if you happen to own a Knight KG85 or KB85, um, one of those is the kit version, the other is the factory built version, so they're basically the same amplifier. But here's a few modifications you could make to it to uh, potentially extend the life of your tubes and or make the amp a little easier to uh, bias. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Okay, for mod number one, I'm going to reference an article here by Dave Galipsy. Um, it was originally published in Audio Express um, some time ago. Let's take a look here. I don't actually have the date on it, but, but it's a pretty in-depth article here. And what it's really talking about is anytime you have a pentode power output tube that has a screen to it and you're pulling off of the screen tap of a transformer, um, that you might want to add in series here a fairly low resistor like 100 ohm at 1 watt. And this will help with um, any time of arcing or power turn on issues and increase the life of your tube. So let's take a look at how we would do that here, okay? Um, it's fairly simple. What you do here, insert a 1 ohm and half watt will work fine in each leg of the screen between the transformer and the actual output tube um, screen, which is pin number four. And you do the same on all four of these. And it's a really simple little modification. You just take the wire going into pin number four, um, unsolder it from there, and then solder in this 100 ohm resistor. And you do that across all four of them. Okay, for mod number two, if you remember earlier, we were running these at about 55 milliamps or so per tube on the uh, kind of the idle bias and you know there's a lot of articles out there if you read them um, on the KB85, KG85 that um, that's a little hot and that they would recommend cooling this down somewhere in the 40 some milligram, 43, 45, 48, 50 milli, milliamps, somewhere down in that range. And you can do that by simply in series with the 260 ohm 10 watt um, if you remember those uh, stick antennas i mean uh, stick resistors that were going up through the chassis um, you would just insert in series with that another large resistor here and it says add between 160 and 220 ohm i saw in various articles where people had done um, um, anywhere in between there and uh, just kind of to their liking and you do it for r19 and r44 so you'd have to do it on both channels and you're basically just cooling down the idle of the amplifier. Um, in my build over here, I ended up using a 200 ohm and it worked out quite well. So um, do, what, do what maybe you have on hand here or maybe what suits your ears the best. And mod number three is really a mod to solve the issue. The way this amplifier biasing works, there's four jacks on the front of this. Jack one, two, three, and four. And you're not seeing the other two because they're down below in the picture and I only took a screenshot of one channel. But basically what you would do is insert a phono um, plug here and on the other end of the phono plug you would need to wire that up so it would go through your digital multimeter as an ammeter. In other words you're pulling the current out of the the um, amplifier here and bringing it outward. Keep in mind this is right here in series with what? <laughs> this cathode okay so you're pulling it out of the amplifier through your digital multimeter back in and through here and you're basically just measuring this current it'd be the same as coming right along here and snipping this wire and putting a current meter in or right here because um, remember current stay the same regardless of the uh, the resistance or whatnot in the circuit voltages may vary along the way but currents stay the same at any rate, what we're going to do is we're going to change this from being a current reading jack over to a voltage reading jack. And all we're going to do is either put a 1 ohm or a 10 ohm resistor across pins 1 and 2 of the jack. So what that does is when the jack is closed like this, this resistor is basically out of the circuit because the circuit is simply flowing through these connections here with 0 ohms of resistance and then back out. But when you insert something, a, you know, a phono plug into the jack, then what you get is you get this resistance because you break open these contacts here. And what you're doing then is measuring across this resistor because this resistor is then here in series with this whole connection. And if you use one ohm, then there's not a lot of math to do. If you use a 10 ohm, you got to do a little bit of a divider there for the math. Um, but 
It's an easy way to bias your amplifier by using these what I'll call sensing resistors here. Um, I'm still an old school fan of take the bottom off, drop a multimeter across these two resistors, measure the resistance of them, measure the voltage across them, use Ohm's law, I is equal to V over R, and you basically know your, um, your current flowing through both of these. And since it's going through two tubes up here at this point, you have to divide by two. Here at this point, you can, you can measure the current in each of these, and you can use um, the bias pots that they have on the front to adjust that bias slightly between the two. That's what this is all designed for. So anyway, hope that makes sense, and um, I'll show you over here on the bench how we did these. Okay, so each of these four tubes here have this screen connection we're wanting to put the 100 ohm resistor in. If you'll remember, if you look at the keyhole on the bottom of a tube and start counting round, around clockwise, so it's always going to be on pin number four. One, two, three, four. So let me make sure I get that right. One, two, three, four. This one right here, the striped one, it's a, kind of a blue and white striped. And then if I find this one, it's one, two, three, four. There again, it's kind of a red and uh, yellow striped um, here. One, two, three, four. I'm back over here at that. So we'll pull all those and we will insert these 100 ohm screen resistors here in, in place. I typically like to cut my resistor in, make a little hook on it so that I can actually insert it into the tube socket pin and then I can come along here and actually just uh, kind of clamp it off good and tight and it gives me a physical connection there and then we'll just come along and hit that with a little bit of solder here and I'm only going to show this on the very first one everyone after this you can, you can figure it out. Okay, I cut this wire back a little bit to keep it from being really, really long. And what I'm going to do is tin the end of the wire here. Just get the solder sucked into it good. I'm going to put tin just a little bit at the end of this resistor lead. And then what I'm going to do is slide a piece of heat shrink tubing down this, this pipe right here. Uh, down this right here. Now all I've got to do is come along. Let me put just a little more solder on that. There we go. Now all I've got to do is come along and make my connection here. Solder these two together really well. Hold them in parallel with each other like that. Okay. Let those cool. Slide my heat shrink down. And uh, shrink it up on the end. And nice pretty little connection. Um, Okay, as you can see, one, two, three, four screen resistors inserted in line and uh, should help with this whole arcing issue the article talks about at power up and whatnot. So, um, okay, for mod two, it's really simple, okay? All I did was um, take this white wire right here that was connected to this end of this resistor, okay? And I cut it loose, right? And then I inserted in series here this 200 ohm resistor. Now, I will tell you, I played with several different resistor values here along the way before I got to the 200. I played with 120, I played with 160, 180, and finally the 200 is where I liked it. It got the plate current down enough, but yet I didn't lose, um, you know, any any volume per se. That's that it was all negligible. Anyway, kind of got that wired in. Um, I do need to, um, I haven't done it yet, I was waiting until I got done playing, but I'll end up sliding this, uh, here we can go ahead and do it. Really don't want to do that right now. There we go. And then it's just a matter of, uh, you know, as we've done before, heat shrink these things down. Okay. You get the idea. You can do it on both sides. So, um... We've got this in place now, and let's measure across this and see what we've got now. I'm glad I left myself a little bit of room right here to clip on to. And, okay. So look, we've got roughly 45 um, volts right here right now, okay? Bounce around just a little bit because the the idle current. And we now have 460 ohms of resistance in series here. So if you kind of do the math on that, 
45 volts, remember Ohm's law, I is equal to V over R. 45 volts divided by 460 ohms, 0 0.978, 0 0.0978, which is equal to 97.8 milliamps. You got to divide that by two tubes because both of the tubes on this side are going through that. It's 48.9 milliamps per tube. I'm I'm happy with that um, right there. So that you know, I think it turned out well, and um, you know, it's got the got mod two in place. I've done it on both sides now. All I need to do is uh, do the shrink wrap over here. Okay, and we've got the the heat shrink done. I would leave yourself just a tad bit there on each end to connect off to. Um, that was more of a physical to hold the um, the wires good and tight there where we had soldered them together so you're not totally depending upon that solder joint to hold that. Uh, but you do want to be able to clip from here to here and measure. There again, you can use these jacks and uh, go that route too. Okay, if you hear that beeping, that is because I'm using a multimeter. I just want to validate before I go um, doing what I'm doing here. And if you'll notice, as soon as a phono plug goes in, it breaks it. So ideally then, you're running your signal out through your two multimeter leads that you would wire up to a phono jack. It's just, it's ugly. There's a simple way around this, and that is to go from the two points that I just proved had connectivity before. Um, right there. Oops. Having a hard time staying clipped on there. At any rate, you guys get the idea. I'm going to go from what was pin one and pin two here, and then when you insert, it breaks, and all I'm going to do is drop a, a, a one ohm resistor across those because when it's not broken and there's nothing, then, then you've got zero ohms here. Um, when you insert that, then you've got one ohms. It just gives you something to measure against. And keep in mind, this whole circuit then goes back through this resistor, this resistor. It goes through these. So if you think about 120 plus the 260 is 380 ohms. With this in series, it's just 381 ohms. It's negligible. But it gives you a point to measure across, and then you can do good old Ohm's Law, I is equal to V over R, and you're measuring voltage out through these jacks here, not current. A much safer and uh, better for your tubes, because well, here's what happens. If you break the connection, let's say you were doing this and you accidentally did that, you would have plate voltage applied, but you'd have no cathode. Um, connected um, could be bad for the life of your tube. Okay, all I did was come off, and maybe I can tilt this a little bit so you can see it. Came off of one side right here and kind of crimped the resistor around on one end. Came up with it. The other end, then I put some PTFE tubing on here, just some uh, some of this kind of stuff, and then I ran it down and soldered it onto the other side of the jack. So now there's always this hundred. One ohm, excuse me, one ohm resistor in series here. And I made sure here with the case on it, we're clearing it. Uh, maybe not as much as I'd like. I think I'm going to bend it out this way. But I don't want to get in, way, in the way of the phono jack. Um, so there we've got plenty of room. And the phono jack can still insert in here. Let me bend that up just a little bit. There we go. Phono jack would come in here, break this connection. Got the resistor across there. I'm running this across, and I'm a good... Uh, Oh wow, two eighths of an inch um, right there away. So we're in good shape. All right, we've got this unit all done now, all wired up, and. Uh... You get the idea. Sounds great. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I know I had fun doing these mods. I always, always like doing mods. I don't know. They're, they're just they're fun. It's all about maybe taking something that was originally designed and making it slightly better for whatever purpose you want to. I mean, keep in mind, back when they sold these amps, and, uh, you know, tubes were dirt cheap, so, you know, crank them up. <laughs> um, you know, bias those things hot. Hey, by the way, same people selling these amps wanted to sell you more tubes. You know, that's not the game I'm playing here these days. I want my tubes to last a while. I want to get decent volume out of them, so on and so forth. So I like to buy some a little cooler than that. But uh, you get the game. Thanks for watching, everybody.